Hello and welcome back to The Lounge. Today is June 9th, Saturday, June 9th, and today is Social Saturdays. You guys know we always come out to local businesses here in the Gables and give you a little rundown about what their business is and what they do. So today we're here at La Provençal and we're here with uh, Carlos and James that work here. So he's the head chef, you said? Yes, sir. The head chef, chef yeah. and the... I am the general manager. General manager for here for La Provençal. So tell me, guys, like... Um, how did you get into this business? How what was the idea behind La Provençal and so I, a, a, a know, brief history? Yeah, personally, uh, you know, it, it's um, it's it's been a long road. I uh, I've been in the industry for over 15 years. We, I myself have uh, you know had the opportunity to work with uh, Grupo Andan de Gas and Eric uh, Eric Cabrera Le and uh, so this has been a, a long time dream for us to come in and to take over a French operation. This was an opportunity that. Uh, that came to us late last year. Uh, so we took over in October, we remodeled, and uh, this is where we're at. This is what we do. This is uh, you know, the type of product that we, um, that we always had in mind and, and uh, you know, that we're bringing to, to Coral Gables and to Miracle Mile right now. Yeah, so you got you first got into like the food industry years ago. Years Absolutely, ago. I, I started in the food industry in New York I moved there in the early 2000s and I started working with uh, Group Alain Ducasse. Uh, Alain Ducasse is probably the uh, most recognized and, and uh, most awarded chef of all time uh, in terms of uh, Michelin stars and, and overall recognition by the, uh, by the industry and the community. Um, you know, and then um, I had the opportunity to also work with, uh, with Eric Repair at uh, Le Bernardin. It's a restaurant, a French, uh, you know, French seafood restaurant that's going to open. Uh, since the mid 80s um, and it's had tremendous success uh, even earning Michelin star rating when Michelin Guide uh, started uh, rating restaurants in the United States. So we've been very lucky. We have a very strong background both in, in, in hospitality and the industry um, and uh, in, in sort of every aspect of, of fine dining. How did you work your way into La Provence? Like how did you end up here? Was that? Uh, it was uh, it was an opportunity that came to us. I have a uh, management company, uh, Food Forward Group. Um, what we do is uh, we develop concepts, we implement uh, you know different types of um, um, of concepts around the you know depending on the on the idea of the restaurant, the concept of the restaurant. We do you know different types of implementations. We do management. We do uh, you know the uh, financial business planning. Uh, so it was something that naturally came to us. It was an opportunity that, that, that was presented to us, uh, you know, some, uh, sometime in, in August of last year. Uh, so we, we decided that it was a, a, a good opportunity to do rebrand uh, and bring the expertise of so many years in the industry uh, together to put this concept together. So you and James got here at the same time or? Absolutely. So yeah, I, I approached James shortly after I had, uh, you know, we you know, we had agreed on, on, on taking on, on Le Provençal, which, is, which was founded uh, 30 years ago in Coral Gables. Well, I think most people remember it as a restaurant in the corner on, um, on, on Douglas, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, on, on Lejeune and, and Miracle Mile. Um, it was there for many years. The restaurant altogether has been open for about 42 years. Uh, so for us, it was definitely a challenge. It was a, a labor of love and to, to some extent uh, coming in here and you know, really understanding and really uh, paying tribute uh, not only to our mentors in the industry, uh, but into rebranding this concept to bring it up to date, to bring it to be, to allow it to be relevant again. Yeah. And James, how did you? How did? What was your history wor working your way up to La Provençal? Well, my history is a pretty long one. Um, I started at the age of 14. Uh, but the love of cooking was also embedded in the Latin roots of, of my family. True. Uh, Where the, are you from? from oh, I'm originally born in New York, but from Dominican parents, oh, from true. Dominican Republic. And, um, you know, in the house, the males in my family have always been the pillar yeah, of cooking. Of you know, course, yeah. el lechon, el, el, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, rice and beans, you know, <laughs> those, those kind of things. And, and, and seeing that love and that energy of constantly just having fun cooking and then bringing the family together. So the concept for me of cooking has always been bringing people together. Um, and I think that I learned early. Uh, I started cooking at 13 with my friends. Uh, at the age of 14, I got my first job as a prep cook. Um, and from there on, you know, it wasn't in me to think that I was gonna become a chef. 
it was just something that I knew that I knew how to do well, you know? So I got into the industry within, you know, nursing homes, fast food places. I worked in a pizza shop in New York doing New York pizza, number one. Uh, and, and, and that labor of love, which it did not become a job. It became like an occupation of fun. Um, and obviously you can eat, okay? And yeah. nourish yourself. As a young man growing, it was always the best way to, yeah. to manage yourself, you know? Um, but then from there on, funny, my dad, decided that he saw me struggling to try to figure out what I wanted to do as a career. And he just happened to mention, why don't you just become a chef? You know, and remember back in those days as one of our wonderful, uh, not so much mentors, but one of our um, beloved uh, chefs that passed away today, Anthony Bourdain, mm. um, long live Anthony, uh, great, great inspiration, great man. He talks about what we did and what it was to not be in the glory days of being a chef, mm. you know, just going to work, hard work, really putting it out there, um, not knowing that this industry was going to get to this point where there's interviews of who's the hottest chef at whatever mm. restaurant. Um, but he said, why don't you go to culinary school? You know, and I, from there I said, that sounds like a good idea. I went to uh, Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I graduated from there with my associates in culinary arts. And then my career started from there. I moved uh, to Baltimore, I worked in New York, um, I worked at Le Panas in New York with Greg Coons. I came down to Baltimore, Ocean City, and then I decided to come to Miami. Mm. And then my Miami career was uh, very, very interesting, it was great, I really enjoyed coming at the time where the Food Network was really blowing up. Mm. Uh, the Mango Gang, I worked for Chef Douglas Rodriguez, you know, the godfather of Latin cuisine. Um, when it was here in Yucca and Coral Gables, another local uh, icon, I worked for also Norman Van Aken, um, way before, again, the large exposure that he had, which a place was called Amano. Uh, it was on the beach. Uh, and it was interesting to see this form, you know, of, of movement. Mark Mattello also a small stint there. And then my career started growing where I worked at various hotels. And then the chef driven restaurant tour started really working hard. I worked where Chef Claude Toigreau, which comes from a family of the Toigreau in Rouen. Um, this gentleman was a deep mentor in what it is, French cooking, and where French cooking is coming and going. You know, his family is very well known for having the longest um, Michelin stars in one particular uh, restaurant, Le Maison de Toigreau. Um, great, great individual. He moved to, uh, to Brazil to open up his own restaurant, and we worked together here at the Delano Hotel. I uh, worked for great hotels like the Four Seasons um, here in Brickell and Four Seasons in Costa Rica. I worked uh, at the Eden Rock with Chef Nobu Matsuhitsa, uh, opening up that new adventure that was there, which was really great. I did a stint with John George in New York at Vong and at Mercer Kitchen. Um, but my love always has been for French cooking. French cooking. My first wife um, was French from Normandy, you know, <laughs> so I really got to travel to France and get to know it uh, really uh, well. and fall more in love with it you know yeah. um, fortunately my French is not that great uh, but the love of the cuisine and the cooking you know I'm a very big fan of Nouvelle um, the days of Escoffier you know the days of, of really where cooking was the foundation and the base and then now on how we can really turn it to a modern view mm. um, so you know meeting Carlos we met at a particular hotel from the Marriott chain um, here and uh, we had and we clicked with the idea, the form, our discipline, our passion, and it was a good fix and a good combination to be able to come aboard to uh, Le Provencal, um, which is one of the longest, you know, uh, lasting French restaurants in Coral Gables and in Miami. When I got here 20 years ago, I've heard of, of, the, of the place. Um, so it was, it's an honor to really come here and be part of this organization um, to put sh uh, French cuisine at a different level mm. and in a different view you know French cuisine has taken so much from other cuisines and techniques not only your simple bechamel um, your simple demi glace or sauce en la moutade it's taken really a big turn when it comes to style flavor profiles uh, light cooking even lighter than it was when it was Nouvelle and then we're bringing in a little bit of the Mediterranean which in the past it had but we wanted to infuse more because I think that's the new road to really work where you're using better olive oils, local farm uh, vegetables, um, and really chef driven. But we're, we're focused more on team driven. Yeah. You know, Le Provencal is a team effort. Um, we try to focus on not only a chef shining, it's the whole group, it's the whole restaurant, it's our whole brand. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a pleasure really to be here.
True. So when when you guys uh, first got here, how how long ago? Like uh, this year, so, right? Yeah. No, we got uh, we came in here on uh, really on it, during October, during September. Uh, for myself, uh, during October we, is when we started the renovation of 2017. Uh, absolutely, 2017. There was a lot of damage from Hurricane Irma. Mm. Um, a lot of things that needed to be changed. Uh, there was very little we could save from you know from the original. Uh, a feel and ambiance of the Provencal um, as you know as a landmark in Core Gables but what we wanted to do obviously was you know really update it and, and really bring a change to you know to what people thought about and, and, and really expected of this restaurant which is yeah. one of the shocks that most people get you know the old patrons that really are the dedicated um, individuals that come here, guests that come here to eat yeah, the, real the fans. first thing you see is the shock of, of the new you know look um, we have you know uh, we have a mixed review. You know, some are haters, some are not. Um, but we had to really assess that it was impossible to really redecorate it in the similar way that it was before. I, I, I think at this it point was, we've was, been accused yeah. uh, from everything, <laughs> you know, from everything from like uh, you know Latinizing the menu to you know to just you know being completely um, out of touch with what it is to mm-hmm. to you know to. To prepare French cuisine, yeah. Uh, so you know, we've heard it all, and it's um, I, none of the comments are in vain. Um, I think all the feedback is uh, taken to heart. Uh, it's something that we we see as as real constructive criticism, and you know, you have to grow a thick skin in this industry, and and uh, for as many years as, as you know we've been in it, um, it certainly shows that you know we are resilient. Um, despite whatever the commentary is, despite whatever the feedback is, uh, you know, it's something that we're working on. You know, the menu is never perfect. The service is never perfect. And uh, those are the marks of a real restaurant. Would you say that's the hardest part about coming in since you guys came in, having to deal with that criticism or that? Yeah, it's, it's natural. It's like, you know, uh, when you, you know, when you had a best friend that lived on the block in the corner uh, for 20 years, and all of a sudden he leaves, there comes a new kid. And it's not easy to accept, you yeah. know, the changes, you know, he was probably Cuban, now he's Dominican. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. what a big difference. Um, <laughs> but that's the whole thing. But for us, is you know, we understand, you know, we understand there are big shoes to fill. We can never be the same as the past, I mean, regardless of what it is, you know, our vision is different. We have uh, still our chef de cuisine, apart from myself, is one of the chefs that were here um, that really held a lot of the, the cuisine of what it was. And even he's refreshed that we came in with brand new ideas, um, brand new vision that even we, we coordinate to, to be in the same path, refreshment, reviving. No one wants to cook the same thing all the time. Mm. I understand that sometimes we tend to want tomatoes all year long, mm. you know, and we, re- we forget <laughs> that tomatoes grow in season and there are particular times that the tomato is completely at its best. You know, we forgot that as consumers. You know, um, and we need to learn that there has to be changes. Even I have to accept that as a chef, mm-hmm. that I cannot cook the same as I did 20 years ago when I learned from school. I have to consistently be learning, innovate, learn new techniques. I still learn. I'm still searching, you know, we still look into. So a lot of the techniques that we brought in are, yes, some of the modern. They have nothing to do really with Latinizing it. There's no such thing. But if you look at the Mediterranean, and that's what we want to do. We want to slowly educate let people understand give us a chance to come in eat what the influence of the Mediterranean is and what it has towards French cuisine today Um, we just got uh, I remember I was almost got killed for putting a burger on the menu (laughs) so happens we won the best burger in Coral Gables so not that I wanted to put something American and Americanize this French restaurant but a burger is international you know, and putting the different flavor profiles, that's what I am about mm-hmm. as a chef. Of course. Putting flavor profiles. Maybe the best tobacco grows in Cuba, grows in Dominican Republic, but what if it this. grows yeah. somewhere else in I Thailand? Talk, I always talk about Is this. it going to be the same leaf? No is it going to have the same no mineral? Way. No. But is it a tobacco? Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and that's what we want to enjoy in cuisine and in French cuisine today. You, we got a text the other day, bombarded text of the amount of burgers that the French are eating in Paris. Wow. I was way ahead of that. Yeah. I knew when I went to Paris, the burgers were hot. 
Yes, we're known for American cuisine. Le Burger, that's why I called it Le Burger. <laughs> but it has all the French properties that it has. Aged brie cheese, caramelized onion, smoked bacon lardon, you know, a brioche bun. It's making me hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it has, it, it has a, a gibriche, which is a sauce that is meant to be uh, eaten with roast beef in France, a cold roast beef. It's the French Big Mac sauce, you know? Yeah. And people, we've played with it a bunch of times. Take it off the menu, people are, where's the burger? Where's, where's the oh, burger? Man. Not that, again, we want to be it's known for that, really, but yeah. that's what we want, controversy. Of we course. want, you know, challenges and, and make people think and bug out and, you know, so that's what's fun about cooking. You know, I don't go to Burger King or McDonald's anymore because it's just the same. But if you yeah. look at their profiles now, they're trying to really put more things yeah. out entice yeah. the palate and get that crowd to say wow I want to try something different so yeah. it's the same thing you know you're not going to find the kidneys but when you do find the kidneys here they're going to be done in a different preparation you know we have the veal sweetbreads we sous vide them instead of the simple pan sear um, our beef bourguignon which is a classic dish we do it braised for 48 hours with short rib with the red wine glaze that is to the point of like oh my god we use mushrooms with more category with more flavor and depth but it's still the same idea of a classic beef burger. Um, so that's what we're all about here, is, is taking a bit of the old, revamp it, retouch it up, put some flavor, put some idea. When you get a dish here at Le Provencal, it's been thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you look at it and you say, man, these guys really thought about it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of restaurants here that still do the traditional French food. And you know what? I still go to them. We still go to them. It's, it's still the great duck you know, uh, cassoulet, but I do my duck cassoulet with a duck egg on top. Mm. You know, we just don't want to be boring. We want to be enticing, we want to yeah. be fun, we want to be provocative in a sense. We don't want to be over gourmet. You know, we want to be just right that people say, yeah, it's a bit different. You know, we, we like that, we enjoy it, we, we see it, you know, and, and that's what our kitchen's about, that's what we're about, you know, and, and this is what we want to give the audience and, 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 and Coral Gables to, to come try us out come see um, and again be critical enjoy it we love it let us know and, and we feel more than happy to come out and give you an explanation because again you yeah. deserve it you know and that's the interaction mm -hmm. you don't want someone to come into your shop and just buy a tobacco exactly that's yeah. kind of boring isn't mm -hmm. it 100% yeah. yeah I talk about it <laughs> can yeah. I just get a tobacco all the time yeah, like, yeah. give me tobacco no. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Right? You, what do you, you, you yeah, get what do you, what, what are you smoking for? Like what you know? Like what do you want to taste on yourself? What do you? Exactly. Let's see, it's all about the exactly. experience, one hundred percent. That's exactly what. That's all we're about. Simplicity yeah. in that in that sense. And I think as a guest and as as a person that that comes in to enjoy one of the best things in the world, smoke a great cigar, yeah, drink a great <laughs> wine, right. eat a great meal. Mm -hmm. It just all goes together. Yeah. You know, it all goes together. So, you know, and, and that's, I think, what, what makes it the essence. I think that's what makes Coral Gables Coral Gables is um, we have great restaurants. We have great shops. We have a great family. Uh, we're growing. We're changing. We're moving to a whole bunch of different directions. Um, but we all need to also honor what we do best in all our areas, you know, and talk about it. Yeah. You know, and let our guests know, not only from here in Coral Gables, from other areas, from Doral, from Miami Beach, our visitors that come to, you know, see Florida. Florida's not only, or Miami is not only uh, South Beach, it's also Coral Gables. Yeah. Ventura. Yeah, Aventura. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Midtown, Wynwood, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. So, you know, we need to be part of that. We need to go with the flow, you know, because Miami's changing. It's mm -hmm. changing rapidly. Fast. Competition is really Fast. growing. Yeah. But we don't want to be competitive. We want to mm -hmm. be that we all give a product that's worth of course. coming for, mm -hmm. that makes us individuals. Yeah, you it's know? not a competition. And, you guys and, already and, won. Yeah, and then the best of the best for your needs. Mm -hmm. You want to eat great French food? Come here and see us. Yeah. We're not the only ones, but we're one of them. You yeah. know? And, and come see us, you know, we'll take care of you. Our service, you know, our food, our desserts, our sweetness, our way of being. So you can't go wrong. And our wines, spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap. You, yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> what would you say is one of uh, your favorite parts about being in this industry and like being a chef or maybe being a general manager? I, I think for you know, uh, for me, being a general manager really means um, really means everything. I, I this is. Um, you have to be uh, an incredibly dynamic person. You have to, uh, 
you have to embrace that type of uh, dynamic ability. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm focusing on right now, for example, is, is our wine list. Uh, where is it that we're going with our wines? And, and I always hashtag wines that matter because to us, it does matter. It's, it's one of the things that, that keeps bringing people in. You know, um, after food, wine sales are, you know, our highest revenue uh, because we want to put wines that matter on the list. I don't, uh, you know, this uh, particular wine here from Bouille and Ginet is 100% uh, uh, Verdejo from Rueda. Uh, it's a small region in, in Catalonia, Spain, uh, close to the Mediterranean. And it matters because the owner himself came in here and he showed me the wines and he told me what he does. And this is exactly the type of, of work and the type of labor and the type of thing that, you know, that we admire. Uh, the same things that, uh, you know, that Anthony Bourdain was out there looking for. Right, the, uh, the something that is that is crafted, something that means something not only to, of course to the producers but to the people that serve it, uh, to the people that promote it, and so you know things like the like this are incredibly um, important to me, uh, to us to be able to local source to be able to minimize our impact on the environment. Um, so it's uh, sometimes this is heartening to hear uh, that you know those things may or may not be appreciated. Um, you know, by, by some of the older demographic, but you know, it's um, we take it as a responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, not only as a, um, a resident and a citizen of Miami, uh, but it's just a, as a global citizen. You know what I mean? There's these are the things that we need to worry about. These are things that, that we need to be concerned about. We need to be concerned about you know um, responsible sourcing, not only of. Uh, you know, the ingredients that we use for, for our cuisine, but also of, of everything that we put on our tables. Yeah. For me, it's, uh, it, it's, the con it's what still keeps me going. The constant wondering of how your day is going to go when you make and create something. What's the new technique? How are the customers going to receive, you know, your idea and, and the project that you're putting together? Because at the end of the day, that's what makes it exciting. You know, it, it still comes from like the house when mom doesn't know what she's going to make. Mm -hmm. But then when she makes that wonderful <laughs> dish, you're like, yeah. holy crap, mom, that was the best thing you ever made. Well, I just threw it together, you know. Yeah. I still go through that theory. You go in, you look, and you see, you source. You don't have, and like some of my cooks will come and say, Chef, do you know what you're going to do when it comes to that? What are you making? I have no idea. Yeah, I, see I have none. I have no idea. It's going to come together as is. Wow, the final plates. And, and that's what makes it fun. Now, there is more research when we do it when it comes to a menu item because that takes a lot of tweaking and, and really reformatting because of the pricing, the cost. But when it comes to specials, learning, techniques, you know, we're always looking for something new to revamp um, and, and, to, and to bring better texture and, and bring a better quality product. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it a lot of fun. You know, I'm a collector of like 400 cookbooks consistently learning, consistently reading. I, re I go through five to six before I even get here, you know. I pinpoint a technique. Sometimes I'm even sleeping and cooking still, which is unfortunately, but it's, mm. it still happens. Um, but it's that love of, of looking for something fresh and new all the time, you know. Um, and nowadays, those are what the menus are about. They're menus that rotate. Some restaurants do a great job rotating them daily, others weekly, others every month, every two months. We're trying to really do it every three. Um, depending on what we call the Miami season, yeah, um, I was about to say, that, yeah. that's what it is—the Miami season. <laughs> like <two seasons>. um, <laughs> but you really, you really have to do research, you know, because at the end of the day, we don't only want to eat tropical fruits. Of course, you know, mango season's coming in now. We're going to be looking at something of doing like a crab avocado with mango, mustard, you know, coulis, and and whatever is available when it comes to our local fruits um, and vegetables that are growing. But I also look into, you know, from New York, so. I do follow a Northeastern and a California cycle, you know, because our suppliers can get those items, you know, and we sneak them in there, you know, so, so because French food is about that, you know, it's about seasonality, you know, um, to have a menu that's completely for three or four years, the same thing, I think we're, we're past that, we're surpassed that, and, and, you know, we love to hear the, the our, our clients, and particularly our older clients that we're here for a long time. A lot of them are requesting the same thing, the same, oh, do you have this particular thing, like the soul um, on the menu? And we'll tell them, well, we don't have it now, but we'll probably have it this weekend, you know? Um, but they also, we want to showcase newer items. Mm -hmm. You know, the halibut is, is the best soul of the best soul. Um, the best soul right now, when it comes to French cooking, comes from Brittany in, in the northern France. You know, that's a very long sourcing, you know, uh, 
mileage separation, you know? Yeah. Um, we have great local fish, you know, the hog snapper fits perfectly for a, a dish prepared in a la marinier, which is with brown butter, lemon, um, you know, so, you know, it's understanding, you know, <laughs> understanding <laughs> textures, you know, the is, 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 is it, uh, you know, so, so that's it. And so instead of a, a loop de mal, you, you, you have a, a queen snapper. You know, which is local water. You know, the grouper is in place of, of a bass, you know, because, again, bass are not really coming from here, particularly stripe. Um, and, and again, it, it's really looking and maneuvering here and there. Um, we tried frog legs, you know, if we put frog legs tempura on our menu, um, you know, it comes in and comes out. You prepare them, everyone's screaming. Yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. screaming. But the whole thing is, is again, try. When I first got here, we were eating alligator. And still, alligator is, is great, you know, and there's nothing squeamish about it. You've got to prepare it correctly. I hear it's very, very it's delicious. It's very delicious. Yeah, I hear that. Very delicious, but you can go very wrong with it. I it can be a very, tough, uh, a very tough meat if you don't prepare it lightly and then you cook right. it in like a scallopini, very simple, very fast, um, not too long because it becomes tough. Um, so, you know, those are it. Um, and again, we are now taking in place of introducing, showing, showcasing. Um, not like proving, but showcase that the wines, the techniques, what we have, because you know the, the new market, the new uh, customer base is very focused on, on seeing you know the exact thing before they come in. So we're going to be working on a lot of uh, on our YouTube channels. We're going to be working a lot with social media. Please follow us, you know, on um, on Instagram, on Facebook. Soon we'll have a YouTube channel uh, going through a particular amount of <laughs> techniques. Uh, so, you know, and jump in the whole thing because we want to say to the young, uh, it's not your grandma's French food. You know, it, it's, it's really something that matches all of the cuisine levels out there, Peruvian, you know, uh, Thai, Asian. French food is the, is the, is the Italian, you know. It, it is the mother of all cuisines when yes. it comes to it. Um, and we're still at that level, we still have pride in that, but at the same time we want everyone to enjoy it at all ages, you know, all, all ages. There's something for everybody um, in, in French cuisine, which is really, really interesting. All right. Well, you guys have any last words you want to tell us, maybe a little bit about the what you see for the future right before we wrap this up? I, I, you know, uh, for the future, you know, we, we want to continue to be a, um, a persistent landmark on Miracle Mile. Uh, you know, this restaurant has been uh, here for a long time. This is our version 2.0. Um, and we want everybody to come in and, and you know, give us your feedback. Give us, a, give us an opportunity to, to be able to serve you. Um, you know, try our cuisine. This is a, um, you know, there's, there's a real culinary effort here. There's a real effort to, to provide service, to provide things that, you know, wines that matter, to provide, um, to provide an overall experience that I think uh, not only the local community can enjoy, but, but something that is inspired by our mentors. And it's a tribute to those that have come and gone from our, from our difficult industry. So, um, that's uh, that's that's pretty much what we're all about. Yeah, and just come on in, and um, every dish has a history. Every dish has a story. Um, we'll be more than happy uh, to explain to you the story and the journey of every dish uh, that we present. Um, and we want to keep it vibrant, fresh, uh, up to date, and and full of love. Um, and uh, most of our feedback has been really, really positive when it comes to the impact of quality, the impact of the presentation, and the impact of the service. Um, mm -hmm. And it all comes together from, you know, the one basic thing, which is uh, really getting involved with a cuisine that has produced so many great chefs. Just to wrap it up, just to say that, you know, it's a cuisine that has inspired and has put chefs on the map on where chefs are today. Um, they're in the front of the entertainment uh, part of what restaurateurs are. I think it's a great thing. It's a great thing that the chef now, chefs are, are showcased um, for their hard work and their hard effort. Um, those that are not, God bless you. We're still back there doing it right, rocking it right. Um, and much respect again to all chefs out there. And I think that's one of the most important parts um, about uh, working and doing French cuisine. It always reminds you of that. The hard work, the hard effort, the glory comes within how we feel and how our customers feel when they eat and they passionately enjoy great food and great wine. Thank you.
All right, guys, thank you so much for staying tuned to the end of this episode. If you like what we had to say and you want to see more, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you could go ahead and favorite our station and be updated whenever any new episode comes out. Go ahead and follow them on Instagram. Please do. What's your handle? At La Provençal. At Le Provençal Restaurant. At La Provençal Restaurant and at Gable Cigars at thelounge.media. Thank you so much for staying tuned, and we'll catch you guys on Monday for Coffee and Cigars number seven.